Hello viewers, well last week I popped across to Rennes in France to see the latest announcement from Thrustmaster, the new TSS handbrake which you can see here in a dual function mode. I have two of them set up here and as part of the unveiling we had Greek man here doing some rally driving action. We're going to look more at the handbrake in just a moment but uh, obviously some stunning skills from him, world class rally gaming action uh, to see the handbrake uh, in action and in the surprising gear shift mode as well. Following that, we had a closer look to see the handbrakes with the new uh, the new table clamp that you see here as well. So you can table clamp that, and of course it combines. You can use two of them together. One as a gear stick, one as a um, handbrake, or combine it with the standard gear shifter as well. And you can see the switch on the device there that switches between gear stick mode and handbrake mode now very adjustable as you see here you've got the different sort of shapes and directions and heights in terms of how you want it if you want it in level with your wheel if you want it down by your side there in a standard handbrake motion you want it at your side uh, so it's both the same height uh, it's 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 uh, very adjustable in terms of your needs it works with any steering wheel so whatever your steering wheel make is uh, you can combine this with that as well and it will work and this is a proper industrial strength piece of kit but so the first thing I did was I got on there and had a, had a feel just of the strength of it the tension how rough I could be with it in terms of uh, you know sort of feedback the travel everything else in terms of uh, just a just a general feel how rugged could I be with it testing here on the Sparco rig and of course uh, this being in, you know with a, a Sparco product as well sort of thing in terms of in line with Sparco branding uh, I was just trying it out seeing how that worked so I felt that the only issue I had here was the wobble in terms of the Sparco rig they really need uh, some kind of brace to uh, brace the product uh, to the actual rig there and I was just pointing out to some of the other journalists where it needed a brace to the sort of the superstructure if you like to really stop that wobble so we've seen the handbrake. The next thing was to do some handbrake turns in real cars. So first we had to spin round the cone and stop the car in a sort of a, a car that was set up with sort of a rally brake. Uh, then we went out in a standard road car where you're sort of pulling the brake up. Uh, and then we, uh, so we're stopping in the corner and then we're doing runs where we exit the corner. Unfortunately, I didn't film it because I was in the car at the time, so I wasn't able to film myself, but the guy setting it up for us was just showing how it's done and then we did it and it was a lot of fun. I'm happy to say I successfully got through my, my whatever it was, 12 attempts uh, were all completed successfully, going, stopping and continuing out the corner as well. After that, we had a tour. Of course, all of this is taking place at the Lohiak Racing Course, which was a nice surprise and it's great to have uh, something like this at uh, you know, a real racing event. I'm going to leave you a bit of chat in the car for the moment as the driver was taking us around. The, the new part here. Yeah. Now we've got the tarmac now. The tarmac here. Yeah. Yeah. So this used to it's be very dirt. Yeah. And then the longest yeah. straight of the track. Supercars here, yeah. about uh, 180, 190 kilometers per hour. It's crazy. A lot of grip here. Yeah, a lot of grip here. Yeah. yeah. And then a very tricky turn here. This turn. Broke yeah. a lot of cars. Yeah, tricky corner. Very dangerous. Yeah. And then tarmac again. And then this is drifting, isn't it? Around here, you're sort of almost a lot of wheel spin. Yeah. Yeah. So you're controlling the power, I guess, on the exit here. Finish line. Yeah. Very So it was great having a little tour, uh, you know, I was looking at this thinking about all the laps I've done on this on Project Cars 2, for example, including my, my little guide I did earlier uh, or last year uh, for the game. And it shows how authentic the Project Cars 2 layout really is uh, and how well it works with a handbrake. And I'll look at that in, a, in another part of this video. But now we take on the, uh, the Joker section, see how we get on. See the nice. landing spots? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Supercars can go over the. Yeah, yeah. yeah they. Uh, yeah. Two wheels. Yeah. And then they meet the other racers. 
And the battle here to me in front. So amazing. I always love having laps of real circuits. When you've seen them in the game, it's always he it seems like he's going quite slow here. In real life it felt like he was going quite quickly, I can tell you, around that course. It's just so strange on camera to when you're actually there. Of course, uh, then the proof is in the pudding, isn't it? I've got to do some runs myself on uh, the various different games and kicking off with WRC7. Now, on a personal note, I feel they've changed the handling on WRC7 around sort of November last year. For me, I'm not liking the, the direction the handling's gone in, but I spoke to Greek man, he didn't feel it had changed at all. So I've got different opinions to other people that the handling has changed subtly on this game since launch in a way I'm not so keen on. But either way, um, it was racing round with the gear stick. Now, one issue I had with this setup was I had the wheel on 100% force feedback and the TSPC racer on 100% force feedback is rock. I could barely steer the car, so I was really struggling to let go uh, and I couldn't drive the car. I would like to have driven the car much more sort of one-handed at times, but it just wasn't possible for us at the time. Uh, and that was a little bit frustrating, so I couldn't really use the handbrake as I would in a home environment. I think I, I use much less sort of force, force resistance in terms of force feedback to really have control of it, whatever the bumps, because it gives me a feedback. I don't want it controlling the movement of the car. Uh, and so then uh, using the, the handbrake and uh, the gear shift together. Now, I think a couple of times I might use the handbrake. I didn't necessarily need it. I think on this stage, other stages I did more. Uh, the handbrake felt very authentic. I mean, having been, been in the real car and done it in the real car, it worked well to do it that way and then play the game because then you could feel it and I think what's really important about the handbrake is you know you turn momentum turn and then you handbrake you don't you don't handbrake first because then you just sort of fly off uh, and it you know it, it all works very well indeed so uh, you know it's quite a competitive bunch of guys there there was uh, all the racing drivers that, that you see there uh, you know who race these games all the time and it was great to see everybody together sort of exploring, uh, testing the different games and seeing how they get on there and stuff like that. But um, either way, I think we were all sort of struggling with the 100% with force feedback that was on this wheel. It really is, as soon as you let go of the wheel, not even let go, one hand, your hand's all over the place. You can't go in a straight line hardly. You need two hands to sort of lock it down. Um, so I was almost punching the, the, the gear stick at times. Uh, and also it took me a bit of getting used to for the moment, I guess two reasons. One is, it, you know, I'm used to uh, a right hand drive in terms of real driving. I always have my gear stick on this side. Uh, and the other thing is just getting used to going up and down. I'm so used to the paddle shifters a lot playing these types of games that it takes a minute to accustomize yourself. It's um, a very professional piece of kit in terms of how it works. I've got some details here actually, uh, you know, we've got here it's a 90% metal, steel and aluminium, so it's a really solid piece of kit, very mechanical there. Um, high, industrial high grade brushings made in Germany. So there we go, made in Germany. Um, conceived for intensive use, ready for eSport competition. So <clears throat> that takes me to the next point that I think we uh, look at is who's, who's gonna be interested in this? How much does it cost? Well, it's available now at $239.99 in the UK, which is a decent price for this kind of product. I and mean, if you're buying a handbrake for your car or, pro or wheels or whatever, they're often very expensive. So the fact that you're getting real life quality products for your car for that price isn't bad at all, especially given the adjustability. So that's fine. Who's gonna buy this product? Well, that's probably going to be expert racers, guys who are really into their driving, people who want that real sim experience, massive rally and rally cross fans, and of course, uh, eSport gamers. Now, there were lots of eSport gamers there showing off their skills and demonstrating their skills at this event, uh, and that was great to see. And I think it, it, you know, talking to them, if you want to be competitive in eSports, obviously you need the best equipment. Uh, and if there's one thing I've struggled with on my rally videos, if you've ever watched them, I can't hit the handbrake on the wheel when I'm turning it. Uh, you know, you need a handbrake by your side. It's a real problem when you're trying to handbrake with a, with a, with a wheel, just pressing that button and you're like, oh, I can't reach it. It's just no good. You know, you need that uh, option wherever the handbrake is uh, to pull the handbrake as you're turning. 
gives you nice exit speed, nice line, much more controlled, makes you more consistent. What's also important, however, is that the competition organizers also let you use this. And it's important the Thrustmaster get in with those guys because if you've been studying, if you've gone and bought these gear sticks, you want to use them in the eSport finals. And I've no doubt that you will see these in all the major tournaments uh, from now on as well. And it's Thrustmaster, obviously one of the brands who are always competing in a lot of the eSport tournaments we've seen, such as uh, WRC and Formula One. So uh, it'll be great to see this included. So I was exploring here just uh, different rally stages. I haven't been playing some of these stages in WRC, but it was a case of, you know, just listening to the co-driver and uh, doing my best to keep the car going as well as I could one-handed. <clears throat> it was a struggle. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, just enjoying the, the run and the, the, the feel from, from the uh, from the gear stick in terms of authenticity. So then the next thing really is gonna be, does it fit to your rig and how does it fit to your table? Well, if you fit it to a table, you've gotta have a solid desk, yeah? Uh, a light table will just fall on the floor. It, it's not gonna work. It needs to be solid, it needs heavy things on it. Uh, that's a key thing. Um, there's no variable uh, option of reducing the, the, the sort of the force against you so if you if you wanted it lighter just to flick it I think there's no option to change the sort of spring strength inside I think that would have been handy because if you do have a slightly lighter desk or a bit of a wobbly rig something like that would have would have come in quite handy but either way it's a really solid piece of kit I like the adjustability on the height of it and the, the angle and direction I think that all works really well and I think really it's just going to be a case for people to understand how it fits alongside their rig what rigs does this fit to how many rigs are out on the market that can fit two of them i don't know i don't think mine can but it's something to look at uh, and i'm not certain if Frostmaster are going to release any kind of uh you know products that are going to uh, assist in that but either way uh, very solid so trying the different circuits out uh obviously it was quite challenging on some of these i mean uh you know i really did find uh you know, again, the, the, the force feedback was really getting in the way of just the enjoyment of of uh, racing with this thing. But I gradually got my head around it and just decided to take it a bit slower in the end, just so I could get around and uh, let go of the wheel from time to time. But um, that's it. That's it for the uh, rally driving action. I, I, I certainly enjoyed that. After this, I went on to uh, try out some of the other games that were there. They had, of course, uh, Assetto Corsa. Uh, Dirt 4 uh, and Project Cars 2 that were running as well and we'll take a little look at Project Cars 2 in just a moment as I work my way around these uh, twisty mountain roads, uh, very tricky slippery conditions. Uh, felt a lot like uh, the real Monte Carlo rally this weekend as well which obviously they had a lot of snow and ice to deal with. Goodness me those guys are very brave uh, and very committed the understanding you need as a rally driver in terms of your commitment to stages like this is always amazing and, and the, the sort of level of the comprehension of response if you like I, I'm always uh, impressed by it but uh, getting better as I was going on and just getting used to just used to to using the stick so very solid really enjoyed all of this and in part two I'm going to talk a little bit about the Lohiak Museum as well, which was amazing. It was the best automotive museum of motorsport in particular I've been to in my life by a long way, by a long way. And I'm gonna have a look at that in part two. But um, that was a bit of rallying on the uh, WRC. The next thing was to uh, check it out on Project Cars 2. Uh, and having just done the Lohiak racing course, I thought, let's try that again. Uh, and that was okay. I mean, again, it was, you know, knowing the course, it, it, I think it showed just how authentic Project Cars 2 really was on a number of levels here. You know, the course modeling was fantastic. Uh, the uh, handling was, uh, as you'd expect, it was quite intuitive uh, in terms of how it worked. And again, I was messing a little bit with the handbrake. I didn't always need the handbrake, but sometimes I just wanted to see how well it worked. That's the thing, you know, it depends on what rally courses you're on as to how many hairpins there are and getting used to the overall feel. But in terms of being in the real car and doing handbrakes and jumping into the game car, it, it felt very, very similar, very intuitive sort of changing from one to the other. 
and I was just altering my lines a little bit as well in terms of uh, in terms of these corners and just seeing trying that inside line you notice the grippy line I thought well I'll try it anyway uh, but uh, I was I was trying different lines out and you know understanding how best to get around the around the course but certainly not as quick as I would have been on those laps had I had a bit more practice so that's it on you know part one for this whole handbrake uh, new TSS handbrake from Thrustmaster uh, in association with Sparco it's a fantastic piece of kit it's very professional well made rock solid and I think if you're someone who takes your racing very seriously uh, then it should be top of your Christmas list or your birthday list or your shopping list for that matter and it's available now and in part two I'm going to look a little bit more at the Lohiak Museum uh, just to show you guys some of what was in there I thought I'd put that into a separate video but um, that's it from me for now as ever more soon